There isn't one standard way to write a book chapter, but all good book chapters have one thing in common. In this video, I'm going to break down what a chapter is, what all chapters have to do, how a chapter is structured, how that structure can change based on genre, and how to go about writing a chapter. By the end of this video, you will know all of the different things that go into writing a standard basic chapter and get the confidence to go and write chapters of your own. So first, what is a chapter? A chapter is a unit of a novel, the sections that you divide your novel into. Your chapters can have titles, but they don't have to. When you write a book, you usually just don't write one monolithic document and after the fact, go and separate it arbitrarily into similarly sized chunks, right? Not all books have chapters, but most of them, at least the ones that I've read, have some sort of break between scenes. Chapters are not just random chunks of story. All successful chapters have to do one thing. It has to move the plot or the subplots forward. Your characters shouldn't be in the same place at the beginning of a chapter as they are at the end of the chapter, because otherwise, what was the point of the chapter? Something needs to change in your chapter, and that thing should be related to the characters, the plot, or the subplots. A mistake I used to make as a new writer is that I would include chapters in my story just for the sake of expanding more on somebody's character or developing the setting in a more deep way. My hope was that by doing this, I would get readers more invested in these characters and settings, but I found that because nothing really changed in the main action of the story in these chapters, it just made my readers kind of bored. You want things to happen in your chapters and you want those things to have variety. Like if your characters get into a huge screaming match in one chapter and then in the next chapter, they also get into a big screaming match and in the chapter after that, they're still screaming at each other. People are gonna either be really, really tired of trying to keep up with why they're screaming at each other or they're just gonna be bored and check out of your story. You can have one chapter that advances your main plot, then another chapter that advances your main plot and a little bit of your romantic subplot, and then you can have another chapter wholly dedicated to your romantic subplot. Then you go back to your main plot. This kind of variety is gonna keep your readers engaged because there's never gonna be too much of one thing. So when you're writing a story or when you're plotting a story, Something that you can do to ask yourself what's gonna happen next in a story is to ask yourself what needs to change next or what new development is gonna help advance your plot, a new clue if it's a mystery. Each of these sections can be its own separate chapter. I hope this all sounds pretty straightforward, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. The first thing that I learned about story when I was first, first starting to write stories is that every story has a beginning, middle, and end. Every chapter in your book should too. Your entire book follows some sort of structure where you have a beginning, you have a middle, you have a climax, you have an end. Every chapter or grouping of couple of chapters should have its own little arc so that your whole story is made up of a sequence of all of these little arcs. In the beginning of the chapter, you want to set up the chapter conflict, what it's gonna change in this chapter and how is that chapter gonna move the story forward. You might be thinking, what if I have a chapter where my characters discover a new clue that helps them find the true killer of this story. If they just happen upon this clue and there's no conflict, isn't that still moving the plot forward? Yes, it is moving the plot forward, but you have to ask yourself, how do they discover that clue? If they just happen upon the clue, like if it's just kind of laying in their backyard and they just walk past it one day and we're like, wow, I can't believe I never saw that there. Maybe it would be more interesting if your characters had to work a little harder to get the clue. If there was something standing in their way of them getting the information that they need. The harder it is for your character to do something, the more interesting it is gonna be to read and the more satisfying it's gonna be when they actually get the thing, if they get the thing. So in the middle of the chapter, you need to have your characters trying to do what it is that they set out to do. This is where they go and actually fight to find that clue. Your character has to do something clever to outsmart the forces that are trying to stop them from getting that clue. There's usually some sort of climax where like they get the clue or they don't get the clue or they discover something new that they didn't know before and there's a twist. I like to think of chapters having their own rising actions so that the action and stakes inside a chapter ramp up as the chapter goes on. And then at the end of the chapter, you have the resolution where your character either gets the thing that they were seeking to get or they don't. There are a couple of different ways that you can end your chapters. If your chapter covers this whole, your characters need to go find a clue and battle some guy in order to get the clue and then they end the chapter with the clue, that is a complete arc. But you can also end your chapter if you want to 
before they actually find out whether or not they get the clue, which is what is known as a cliffhanger ending. If you have a big plot twist in the middle of your book, you can end your chapter before anything is resolved and leave the readers wanting to go read the next chapter to find out what happens. These kind of chapter endings are more common in very, very intense parts of the book, the life or death moments in the book. A more effective cliffhanger is gonna be whether or not the character actually survives compared to what the character chooses to make themselves for breakfast. Cliffhangers are most effective in very action-packed moments and also action-packed genres. But even though cliffhangers can be effective, if every single one of your chapters ends on a cliffhanger, it's gonna make the effect kind of not as powerful on your readers. You always want to tease what's gonna happen in the next chapters, because if you are following a larger arc for your story, hopefully your action is rising as you approach your climax. And if you have that constant rising action, you're not gonna need a cliffhanger in every single chapter to get people wanting to know what happens next. So you can pick and choose whether or not you want to end your chapters on this cliffhanger, or if you want to have a more closed resolution on the main plot of that chapter. I've also seen many writers get worried about chapter length and maybe having chapters that are much longer than other chapters, but please don't worry about this. Chapter length does not matter. Just focus on making sure that there's something that advances the plot in every single one of your chapters and don't worry so much about length. And please don't make your chapters take up more space than they have to. Fluff is bad. Stuff that doesn't advance the plot should not be in your book. So with all that being said, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I like to go about outlining my chapters before I even start writing them. When I outline a book, I usually don't break up my outline into chapters. I break them down into important scenes and moments. And then I end up grouping them into chapters as I'm writing. I outline my books using a method called plot grids. If you are interested in seeing how I outline my books, I've made two videos on this channel so far, one talking about what a plot grid is and another where I outline a book from scratch in 20 minutes using a plot grid. So check them out. The links are in the description below. Once I have an outline of the entire book structure, so what my inciting incident is, what my rising action is, and the midpoint and the climax and all of that, and I sit down to actually start writing the book, I do a brief outline of the chapter in my Word document right underneath the chapter heading. It really only takes me five to 10 minutes before I start writing, but it really helps me figure out what the arc of the chapter is gonna be and what the main tension of the chapter is gonna be. I start with answering the questions that I started this video with. I figure out what my character needs to accomplish in this chapter, and then I figure out what's standing in their way. Once I figure that out, I brainstorm a couple of things that this antagonistic force can do to stop my character from getting what they want. And then I try to come up with ways that my characters can outsmart them or outwit them or just do something that beats them. Or not, like sometimes they don't beat them. I like to have these things ramp up a little bit so that it starts out just a little hard and then it gets harder and then there's some kind of complication that comes in later and it gets really hard. Not every chapter is gonna have all of these different elements going into it. I just wanna give you a very basic idea of kind of a standard, standard chapter that you can refer back to when writing your own chapters. I hope this basic overview of chapters was helpful to you. If it was, please make sure to give it a like and to subscribe to my channel for more writing videos coming your way once a week. My name is Claire Fraze and I'm an award-winning young adult author who makes videos sharing actionable writing tips that helped me make my writing better. Have a good week, everyone. And as always, happy writing.